How freaky would that be if we got to a point where we could re-engineer the mind so that you are in a state of ecstasy all day, like you're on E? Uh, dude, why not? Steve Silberman, who wrote that article about Steve Jobs, talked about performing a metacognitive hack of the human operating system, whether you use, like, yoga or meditation to use yeah. the mind, to watch the mind, and ultimately to upgrade the mind, uh, or whether you do, you know, our thoughts shape our spaces, and our spaces return the favor. Like, we build environments, and in turn, we engage in feedback loops with those environments, and they change the way we think. I think that we're gaining some new uh, cognitive functions and some some new abilities to read each other and to, to, to have insight into each other because of technology. Yeah, I mean, I think that the what? first information technology was language in the alphabet. You know, I mean, people always mm -hmm. like criticize technologies. You know, when we invented writing, it's, right. been, it's been said that Socrates used to say that you should never write anything down because it was going to rot our brains. And this technology of writing was this terrible thing. And then it kind of becomes so embedded in who and what we are. Jay-Z rocks it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Jay-Z and Socrates. Because Jay-Z, I've always been amazed that he doesn't write any of his raps down. Uh, that's He's so right. brilliant, he just keeps them all in his head. And it's in, in um, Everlast is Ever. the same way. Doesn't write anything down. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, whatever works for each person. But I think that what um yeah, what, they they feel like they should as a, as a as an artist be able to spew out all their best stuff. But even even language and thinking is right. a technology too. I mean, we're still depending on various components of the brain to do a certain right. function. So I think this. What do we call this? The skin bag bias? I mean, this assumption that it's better if it's all coming from within us. I think our actual minds are actually a part of a dance between our brains and our environments and our tools. I mean, I outsource part of my cognition to the iPhone. There's a whole it's crazy, theory called it? the extended mind thesis. And you literally, you create artful change in the world using the magic wand known as the iPhone. It stores part of your memory. It allows you to interface with reality and actually cause change in reality. Amber Case is a cyborg anthropology. She says our smartphones basically give us technologically mediated telepathy. SMS is basically sending your thoughts through time and space at the speed of light. By pressing a few buttons, you become telepathic. All you have to do is embrace the idea that that's a part of you. It's the extended phenotype that Richard Dawkins or talks about, right? It's, you know, termites build termite colonies. Termite colonies are part of this termite species. You know, what we produce is part of our extended phenotype. It's a part of us. It's not separate from us. So this is Crazy. just connecting us to us. This yes. is really just connecting us to us. Yeah, this, this, this enhancing this. who you are because you are the connection between you and all the other positive organisms around you. And the more you can, the more you can keep that going exponentially, the happier and the better life will be. Yes.